Hey everyone, I'm Ben Gramico from InterNACHI. That's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. And we do uh, free online webinars. Um, they're open to everybody, uh, members and non-members alike, contractors, real estate agents. And um, today we have a really good webinar because uh, we're gonna talk about a particular tool that I use all the time. And um, we have about 300 people registered for today's webinar. Feel free to ask questions uh, during the presentation. Um, afterwards, uh, we're gonna give you some information here, but if you have more information about um, moisture meters, um, feel free to ask questions. So this is your time to ask questions. And I have uh, two of my buddies here, Chris Ranwell, Global Product Director, Protometer Moisture Meters, and Tom Rochensky, National Accounts Manager for Protometer Moisture Meters, and fellas, I wanna thank you for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to share information about moisture meters. And uh, I wanted to show you, uh, I, didn't, I didn't show this before, but uh, this is my favorite tool. Um, I don't know how old this is, it's about as old as me. You can, tell it's, 20 years. <laughs> you can tell it's a good one because the button is, is worn out, right? <laughs> the darn thing still works. I mean- We, it's, we it's, can it's, help you out with that. Of course it'll work, yeah. The darn thing still works. And I don't use I don't use this. This is another favorite tool of mine, infrared. This is a FLIR C2, they don't make them anymore. I don't use this without this. So these two are like companions and you probably can talk about that as well. So um, we have a really good uh, webinar presentation with these two buddies of mine. Thank you so much again, um, Chris and Tom, uh, take it away. Well, thank you, Ben, and uh, you know, thank you again, everybody, for joining today. And uh, as I said, as Ben said, my name is Chris Ranwell. I'm the Global Product Director, um, and we'll do a quick introduction for myself and Tom for you. Uh, the the meeting today, um, you know, we'll keep to 20, 25 minutes, but you know, we really encourage questions through the Q and A button below, or we we'll open it up for questions at the end as well. Um, but, um, you know, if you have questions as we're moving through things or you want to go back to something, that's no problem. We can, we can address that. We're going to really talk about, you know, although Tom and I both represent Protometer, you know, we're talking about moisture meters generally and how to use them and how to get the most out of your moisture meter. And we can talk about specific products uh, if you have questions on that. I will just show you one new product because I think it's particularly uh, useful for home inspection. I'll explain the reasons why. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you can contact us anytime after this as well, if you have any specific questions. So we're going to have a quick introduction of myself and Tom and our business. And then we'll talk about pin moisture meters and non-invasive moisture meters and how to use both methods of measurement really to give you uh, the best information once you're doing a home inspection. We'll talk about humidity and thermal hygrometers. Tom, actually, we're very lucky to have Tom working for us. He spent several years uh, with Fleur, so he's a real good expert on thermal imaging. So if you have questions about thermal imaging, and just as Ben said, you know, moisture meters and thermal imaging really go hand in hand. They make very good partners when you're doing a, a home inspection. And then we'll give you a little bit of information about, you know, when you're looking for a moisture meter, the type of moisture meter you want to buy and so on. And then, as I said earlier, we'll open it up for questions. So, um, as Ben introduced us, Chris Ranwell, I'm the Global Product Director for, for Protometer. I'm really responsible uh, for conceiving the new products that we bring to market and um, commercializing them. And then Tom's responsible in North America for selling them. We sell globally, obviously, but Tom's the North, our North American account manager. And we sell through a distribution network. The company Protometer, I think probably most of you have heard but its roots are really in building inspection, although a lot of our market is flood damage restoration these days. Uh, and the business really started from um, a company called ProTim, who made timber treatments, protect timber is what ProTim stands for. And these timber treatment treatments were for fire retardant, and they needed to know the moisture content of the wood before they put the fire retardant. So they invented a moisture meter, basically using a, an old AVO electrical ohm tester and created calibration and ProTim meter was born and that came out of ProTim or Protect Timber. So that's where the name comes from. It started in 1955 
and uh, you know we've gone through a few ownerships. I'm pleased to say that you know we were acquired by Amphalon in 2013, which is a company based in Wallingford, Connecticut, and that has been really, really good for us uh, in terms of the investment in our business. And you may have noticed if you follow our product line uh, that we are regularly launching new products and new designs. So um, our business, although our headquarters for the for Amphalon Corporate is based in Wallingford, Connecticut. Our business is based and we ship all our products out and support all our products from a service standpoint in St. Mary's, Pennsylvania. Um, and in fact, St. Mary's, just a fun fact here, St. Mary's, Pennsylvania is uh, the, the home to America's second oldest brewery after Yingling, which is also another Pennsylvania uh, brewery, but all sort of former German immigrant brewery. So it's good beer. I hope you get a chance to taste it sometime if you're ever in Pennsylvania or Western PA. Um, I've certainly sampled it a few times on my trips down there. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, we're, we're going to go through pin meters, non-invasive meters, thermal hygrometers, thermal imaging, etc. So with pin meters, I think this may be, let me just get rid of that. With pin meters, this is a typical pin meter uh, and you have pins on the top as the name suggests and you know you can get all sorts of different displays on these types of meters so obviously a digital display you're all familiar with and then we also have these color leds um, but also you know you'll see meters out there just with color leds and the leds on these meters really are green yellow and red and they obviously indicate <coughs> the moisture zones that the meter will see this is our product, it's called the Digital Mini, but it's very similar to any other pin meter. Um, it measures the resistance between two pins. So we never actually are measuring moisture, we're measuring the electrical conductivity of the material that you're pushing these pins into. So the benefit really of pin meters is that they're very repeatable uh, measurements. So they're not, um, with non-invasive, we'll talk about it. There are some downsides of using non-invasive. Obviously, a lot of people believe that the downside of using a pin type meter is that you're going to punch lots of holes. So we'll talk about how to avoid that and get still get more accurate readings in a second. The meters are generally all calibrated for wood. So any pin meter you buy, when you talk about moisture content of, a, of some drywall and it says 14 percent or something like that, then you know, it's actually not 14% moisture content, but it's 14% wood moisture equivalent. So I'll explain what wood moisture equivalent to you in a second, but I just would recommend that, you know, you always use that wood moisture or percent WME in any reporting when you're not measuring moisture in wood. Actually really, really wet drywall, if you did an oven test would be about one to one and a half percent in, in a, an oven tested actual moisture content. And why do we calibrate and why do all the other manufacturers moisture meters calibrate for wood? Because wood really is a consistent product. There's slight differences from species to species, but it's a pretty, it's a pretty um, consistent product in terms of its electrical conductivity between species and species to species. Whereas something like concrete, for instance, its base electrical property would change because of the mixture or the strength of the concrete, how much cement compared to aggregate there is. It makes a big, big difference to a conductance type moisture meter. So the reason we use wood is a very consistent product, it's used in most building construction and it's very hygroscopic. In other words, it breathes moisture in and out uh, very easily. So when we use the WME system, when we're measuring moisture in wood with a pin type moisture meter, we're measuring the actual moisture content to an oven test with some species correction, which is pretty minor. But for, 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 for home inspection, it really is negligible anyway. And then when we're measuring in other materials, we're measuring the WME, the wood moisture equivalent. Now, what does wood moisture equivalent mean? It means what wood, W-O-O-D, would obtain if left in close contact or equilibrium with, with that material. So let's give you an example of that. And I've written an example down here for you. If you get a piece of two before and you put your moisture meter in it, it reads 14%. And then you go to a basement on grade 
concrete floor and put your pins in it and it reads 25%. It's not telling you the concrete is 25%, but what it's saying is that wood sat on that piece of concrete would obtain 25% moisture content, be in the red zone and therefore decay if left in that environment. And as we all know, moisture migrates from dry to wet, uh, wet to dry, I should say, sorry, wrong way around, wet to dry. So a building is always trying to equilibrate its moisture content, and whether that be direct transmission from, from material to material, or through the air, soaking up through the uh, humidity in the air, the building's trying to find this equilibrium. So really the point of this, and we have some data sheets on this, or we have further explanation on WME if you need it, I would just stress that you should you know, use the, the expression WME on any reports if you're not, if you find excessive moisture in drywall, for instance. If you find excessive moisture in wood, you can put moisture content, that's absolutely fine. There's pin meters of anybody's type, really, really every manufacturer out there also produce accessories. And these accessories are really useful for you, um, you know, should you want to do further investigation or if there are areas where you can't reach. So for instance, you know, behind, you pick up, you open up some kitchen cabinet doors uh, under the sink, for instance, and you see some staining at the back or your thermal imaging camera shows you potential moisture. You've got to climb in there with a moisture meter and try and read the moisture meter. It's not that easy. So there are probes that either come or you can buy as accessories that plug into the side of the meter and enable you to hold the meter comfortably in front of you and reach into the back of the, the kitchen cabinet, for instance. We also do probes that allow you to get behind a baseboard, like this flat probe here. Um, will allow you to get in behind a baseboard to you know, test sill plate if you see any sign of moisture again with a thermal imaging camera or any visual inspection. And these types of probes here are called what we call deep wall probes. So they only measure at the tip and they're insulated throughout. But for instance, you could use them in EF structures. You can also use them in uh, cavity walls to test insulation or something behind the cavity wall. So those are all options. Obviously, ideally, you don't want to be doing any damage in the home with these types of uh, apparatus. And we sell a lot of this sort of plugins to our flood damage restoration market. But certainly, you know, this probe here, you can get into areas without making any damage. Um, and the pins on the meters, while we're talking about that, really are in our pro tip, we'll tell you that, you know, moisture meter pins really should just break the surface. You should barely leave a mark. But what's best practice really is to search for potential moisture with a non-invasive meter. I'll talk about that in a second. And then which, if you find what you think is excessive moisture, then please do measure it with pins. We don't advise anybody, <coughs> excuse, excuse me, to go purely on um, non-invasive readings only. And I'll explain when we get to non-invasive um, measurements in a minute, why you don't want to do that. So pin meters are the most accurate and repeatable type of measurement device. Um, and again, you don't need to dig the pins right into the material. You know, for instance, on drywall, just break the paper. You barely will see a mark if you'll see a mark at all. And you can obviously find the areas where no one's going to see any mark, but please, you know, understand that pin meters really do give you a much more accurate and repeatable reading. Uh, we talked about the accessories and, you know, the other thing you can do is take a baseline reading and understand what the moisture content of the building should be roughly. And this is what we call a WME chart. So, you know, check your area, the region that you're in. And, uh, you know, I live in, in Southern Maine and uh, inside my house it's 70 but you know the humidities outside now are getting really low and you know once you get to this kind of low humidities and the moisture meters are not very good uh, reading but very much below about seven or eight percent um, so you may not get a reading at all in the winter in the northeast uh, obviously as the humidity increases the building soaks up that moisture and you start to get increased levels Obviously anything, once you get above 16 or 17%, you should be concerned about. And the meters generally will show you a green, yellow, and red reading. So, you know, 16 to 19 is yellow and 19 and above is red, warning you of excessive moisture. But this is kind of a good chart that you can just print out. So in your mind, you can think, 
yeah, this building should be at 12 to 14 percent, something in that region. I mean, it's not going to be as accurate as this, but it just gives you a good, you know, indication. And then if you saw something, you know, if the whole building was, was at 11 percent and you saw something at 14 or 15 percent, you might think, hmm, is there a problem here or has there been a problem here in the past? There's some sort of moisture ingress, which is no longer present or, you know, it's not raining now and it's drying out. So, you know, you could think about some sort of form of deeper diagnosis in that way. And as I said, you know, non-invasive readings are good to find moisture, but, you know, just record your readings on your reports are recommended for pin type meters. Pin meters actually are really very, very reliable. They don't really ever go out of calibration these days. <coughs> in the early years when we were making them in the 50s, I think, you know, they had uh, potentiometers that would need to be adjusted and calibrated and so on, but these electronic high uh, performance resistors that we use in these types of meters here, they never really go out of calibration or drift. But you do get with our meters and a lot of other meters, a calibration check device, and you should just put, it just goes across the two pins as a resistor, and you should use that on a regular basis. Um, you know, you it takes a second to do. You could do it before every uh, inspection if you wanted to and record you know maybe put it as part of your standard inspection report that the meter has checked for calibration using uh, low resistor. Uh, Non-invasive meters is a picture of ours here there's, there's many different types of non-invasive moisture meters you'll see ones with two pads on the back uh, this type here they are essentially uh, all doing the same thing they're looking at the conductance of the material uh, below them, they do it in slightly different ways. So some we use a radio frequency type method, and uh, in in this, so with non-invasive uh, moisture meters, if you're using the, this method uh, employed by protometer, you get an average reading across the depth of measurement. And the depth of measurement is typically about three quarters of an inch. Um, and if you're using uh, the meters with pads on the back or some of the other meters you're going to get the highest moisture it finds first. So that's pretty critical to understand that because often you'll find condensation, for instance, which is a surface moisture problem. Um, and that will read high on the pins, and low on the, on the non-invasive with our meters, but on most other meters using this, this uh, non-invasive technology, it will give you a full scale deflection. It will just say, because it's reading the highest moisture it finds first, as opposed to the average moisture it finds across its depth of measurement. So that's a big critical dis difference between ours and other meters. I'll explain how you can use that to your benefit in a second. So when you're using these meters, you just understand that there are potential areas for false positives with a non-invasive meter. So, <clears throat> you know, for instance, corner beading, um, that there's metal, it will make this reading meter read high. So it's important that you know you you understand that there are false positives, and when you're using a moisture meter, it's really I mean whether it's in pins or in non-invasive, they're there as a tool for you to make a diagnosis of the problem and not you know solve the problem or tell you what the problem is. So in exactly this this way, you find a high reading. If you have to immediately think. Hey, is this metal behind here? Is this some metal laugh? Is the um, you know corner beading just to make sure that it is moisture? But of course, if you're using a pin meter as well, you can confirm with pins and non-invasive uh, measurement whether in fact it is metal behind the surface. Non-invasive meters such as the Aquant you saw there, and then here is a Reachmaster product, which I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, later on. Um, is that they're really good at finding moisture fast, just like a thermal imaging camera is, um, <clears throat> and making some relative reading. But again, we always recommend you find a high reading, use the pins to measure it. Um, <clears throat> the other really good area where you can use the non-invasive is on tile. So whether that's around a toilet bowl to see whether the wax seal's you know, leaking, or whether it's in a shower surround, but they will work uh, really well on tile where there's really no visual indication of moisture. So that's a really good um, method to use them. You know, we have combination meters um, like the Survey Master, which probably a lot of you are already using, where you can use pins and non-invasive on the same meter. And that really is a great combination 
uh, to do your moisture surveys. So you very quickly can move from one mode to the other. Hey, Chris. Um, yes. Uh, this, this looks like a, a good time for uh, a question. Um, <laughs> And feel free, anybody, to ask questions if you have any questions. But Jim is asking that he has uh, a non-invasive moisture meter from General. Almost always shows a high moisture contact in masonry on the masonry setting. And he's wondering if he has a, a real issue or not. How does he determine, how do you determine if uh, the moisture meter that you're holding, hopefully it's a protometer, uh, is accurate or not? I mean, you, you have that calibration device, but um, are you saying uh, find a wet spot and then find a dry spot and they should be different? Or, or how do you trust your meter? Yeah, so yeah, obviously you can use calibration check device. It's less difficult to do it with a non-invasive uh, meter. You can't do field calibration check. Yeah. Um, apart from actually with our new reach master, you can do that. But, um, you know, the way to really understand those high readings is again, you know, if you, if it's masonry and then you have a wooden baseboard below, Go and take a measurement on the wooden baseboard because, as I've said earlier, moisture migrates from material to material, so from wet to dry materials. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if it's in contact with it, do you see an elevated reading on the baseboard? That's a really good method to do that. And Richard is asking if the presentation of the slideshow uh, is going to be available to everyone. Yep, you can request it from Chris uh, uh, directly, or I'm going to make it available. Uh, no matter where um, this video recording of the webinar is going to be on uh, natchi.org and also on YouTube. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for your questions, everybody. Keep them, keep them coming. So uh, I know we probably need to move along a bit faster here, but there's a, there's a, there's a, um, sorry, go ahead, Ben. No, you're good. You're good. Okay. Um, so as I said earlier, you could, you can use a combination of pins and no pins to determine whether you have surface moisture, which is typically condensation. Uh, and that may not, not only, only be like a simple problem to make sure that the area is ventilated enough, or you're in a bathroom, uh, you know, an hour or half an hour after somebody's showered and there's still moisture because they didn't have a window open or they didn't have a bathroom fan on and so on. That will appear as condensation perhaps and not moisture. So with our meter, and there's a video about this now, about this that you can go on our, our channel, which I'll show you later. But it shows you how to use the Survey Master to measure with pins and non-invasive to determine if the moisture is only on the surface. And if it's only on the surface, the non-invasive reading will give you a slight elevation and the pins will give you a full scale reading. Then you know that the moisture is only on the surface and it's probably condensation. We'll talk about another way of understanding whether you've got condensation in a minute. In fact, here. So I don't know whether many people use hygrometers on home inspections. I get a feeling that some do, some don't. It's not like a moisture meter, which is obviously the tool everybody has to have. But we found a lot of people <coughs> get a lot of uh, interesting data out of hygrometers, um, particularly as you, as I mentioned earlier, about understanding what the moisture content of the building is using that equilibrium relative humidity chart. But this product here <coughs> measures relative humidity and temperature very, very quickly, but it also has a laser pointer that measures the surface temperature. And with those measurements, you can calculate a surface's what we call proximity to dew point, so how far away you are from condensation. So, you know, you go back to that bathroom scenario I told you about earlier, where the humidity is high, you know, it's cold on, on the surface temperatures you're seeing a reading on your moisture meter, well, you can actually confirm that with a, with a handheld hygrometer like this. Push a button, push the point, press the pointer at the, uh, at the, at the wall or floor in question, and uh, it'll, it'll tell you whether you're at dew point or how close you are to dew point where condensation will form. So hygrometers, again, very, really useful to determine uh, humidity um, in the rooms for you know, this equilibrium relative humidity, what your wood and material moisture contents should be at that temperature and at that humidity, but also for the helping you to determine whether you have condensation. I would just say um, with uh, thermal hygrometers, you know, make sure that um, those are not left in your vehicle at high temperatures or low temperatures if you're going to use want to use them quickly <coughs> when you get into the building because um, the biggest 
the response time is really the what we call the thermal conductivity of the meter. So if the meter has been left in hot or cold conditions, it's going to take a while to come up to temperatures before you get any accurate reading. So I definitely recommend if you're if you're using a hygrometer, keep it at close to the temperature you're going to be using at, if possible, or just accept that it's going to take a while to acclimatize uh, to those conditions. When you're buying a hygrometer, uh, there's lots of different um, sensor types out there, but just be wary that there's some very low cost hygrometers. They'll take, you know, 40 to 50 minutes to give you an accurate reading. Uh, and then that reading is within 5%. You really want to be looking for a product that has a 2% accuracy and gives you a nice fast speed of response. And then ideally, if you're, you know, um, a product with a replaceable humidity probe, so if you ever need to carry calibrated, actually just, it's really just low cost to replace the sensor, buy a new sensor for it, and you're good again for another year. Um, and then, as we mentioned, the infrared surface thermometer um, is a good feature of the moisture meter. And our, our, this is our MMS2. We also have something called the Hygromaster 2. They all have infrared thermometers on them. Um, and they actually, this MMS2 that some of you may already be using has pin measurement, it has the non-invasive measurement, the pin measurement, as well as the humidity on it. So it's a good all round single meter. Um, thermal imaging, I would imagine most of you using thermal imaging, you, you really are, uh, already understand what a valuable tool they are to help you, you know, find areas of potential moisture and quickly and easily. And we recommend you, the continued use of uh, thermal imaging. We don't make a thermal imager, but um, we understand the, the huge benefit of having that as an additional tool uh, in your toolbox. And obviously <coughs> thermal imaging is only really telling you the difference in temperature from one material to another or one from one area of the material to another. So any potential moisture would need to be confirmed with a moisture meter, which I'm sure you guys are already very, very familiar with that practice. So keys to um, purchasing a moisture meter. Uh, I think you know, having I've been I've been in the business for twenty seven years or something, and, and been involved with home inspection for almost that long as well. You know, I have multiple people uh, have said to me over the years that their moisture meter has saved them thousands and thousands of dollars in, in, in finding uh, moisture which they may well not have found. So I just. You know, if you're going to buy a moisture meter, I recommend you get a good, durable, rugged one uh, with a long warranty. And uh, you know, it's it's such an important tool for you. Um, get it from a reputable company. You know, there's a lot of good distributors out there that specialize in home inspection, um, and you know, we have a list of them on our website. They sell our products as well as other people's products. Um, but you know, if you if you get a good partnership with a distributor, you go for your for inspection tools. Um, those, those guys really, most of them really, really know, uh, you know, about in depth about a wide range of products, including, you know, gas sensing tools as well. Um, and, you know, our meter, as I mentioned earlier, has the RF frequency mode for non invasive. <coughs> that does have some significant advantage over pad meters in the fact that it will, you know, the meters with two pads on it or have two conductors under a piece of plastic. Um, that that will, as I said earlier, give you the highest moisture it finds first, as opposed to the average moisture across its depth of measurement. So you're not gonna get as deep in some cases where there's high moisture. And then, you know, the survey master I mentioned earlier, our product is a dual mode product, pin and pinless. This is the most popular instrument in, in home inspection for good reason. Um, and those are the, you know, as I explained earlier, the combination of both measurement systems on one simple to use product has been very, very successful. I think <coughs> probably, I don't know what percentage of home inspectors have the survey master, but a, a large percentage. Um, so th th before we go on to uh, questions, there's a couple of things I wanna just show you from a resource standpoint. Uh, we have a YouTube page here, um, which has a lot of links to obviously some of it is product advertising essentially but there's a lot of tips and tricks on here that we've put on here over the over time that you might want to look through we have a frequently asked questions on our protometer page and of course you can call tom or i if you have any questions 
And we have a Facebook page, which we really like more people to join and trying to get more of a discussion on moisture meters and the use of moisture meters and, you know, people to post pictures of moisture problems that they've seen in buildings and, you know, try and get, <clears throat> so if you have a chance, you want to visit our Facebook page and, um, and like that and kind of join that community, we'd really appreciate that. Um, so whilst all this presentation really has been about moisture measurement generically, I did want to just highlight one of our products to you um, because I think it really has some good value in um, the, uh, let me just go to the, really has some good value in home inspection. And this is a new meter that we launched this year. I'm going to play this video for you. Um, it's our ReachMaster Pro. And this is a telescopic non-invasive moisture meter. Now I've talked to several home inspectors who've got these and uh, you know, they, they've essentially stopped taking ladders in to take moisture measurements and using this because, as you'll see from the video, um, it really, really can speed up an inspection and allow you to reach areas that you couldn't do with a ladder, without a ladder before. We're really excited to present to you today the Protometer ReachMaster Pro. This is a non-invasive, extendable moisture meter. Because the ReachMaster is an extendable product, it makes getting to hard to reach areas very, very simple, easy and safe. There's no need for ladders or crawling around on your hands and knees. The ReachMaster Pro has a display head unit and a sensor end that wirelessly connect to each other automatically. Both the display and the sensor end are hinged and designed to make measurement and operation easy when measuring on walls, floors and ceilings. The ReachMaster Pro uses new non-invasive moisture measurement technology to detect moisture levels in materials. Depending on the material and the sensitivity setting on the ReachMaster Pro, it's possible to find increased levels of moisture up to an incredible 5 inches or 120 millimeters below the surface. The ReachMaster Pro can be used in a variety of building materials, wood, drywall, concrete, etc. The protometer technology is not affected by surface moisture, so that means you can penetrate through any surface condensation. To start to use the ReachMaster Pro, simply press the button on the sensor end unit, then move to the display unit. Press this button once, and automatically the head unit will connect to the sensor unit. All right, so I, I'm not going to give you the instructions on how to use it, but uh, you can look at that video in your time. But I just felt like that will be worth just showing you guys because for home inspection, I really do think it will save a huge amount of time um, when you're mapping out some potential moisture problems. Oh, I like that. So, I like sorry, that. Ben? I like that one to reach. I'm tall enough to reach, but I don't want to bend over and, and <laughs> exactly. go around the toilet area. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Stay away from that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we do have questions. Um, it, Tom or, or, or Chris, if you want to look at the questions and, and pick them off, or do you want me to, to give them to you? Uh, yeah, why don't you read them to me and I'll, uh, I'll okay. uh, and then Tom and I will answer them depending on the question. Okay, so John says, if I heard you right, you said the meter is affected by relative humidity. Does it mean this meter cannot be used up north in Canada or winter? No, no. So right. the building's moisture content is affected by relative humidity. So it breathes moisture in and out depending on the humidity when it's there. Obviously, as I, as I mentioned, uh, the building envelope really is a very hygroscopic so it breathes moisture in and out depending on the time of year and the humidity you have in the, in the area but moisture meters will work in really any of the humidities you identify yep um someone recommended to me protome protometer survey master that's i've got my old one uh still working dual function moisture meter do you have a discount for me if i'm interested in buying one today <laughs> that's a great question so we don't we don't sell direct we sell through distribution and we can certainly that, that you will find discounted prices online and we can certainly point you in the direction of a distributor who can look after you yep. if you ben if, if that um person wants to email me i can send him some distributors um that he can buy that product from the where it will be in stock great chris can you move back uh, in your slides to uh, your names and emails so um, Richard, uh, I, I already answered this. Uh, the presentation slides, I'll make them available. Uh, you can email me 
um, or, or Chris. Um, so Richard says, uh, Scott, sorry, Scott Richardson asked, putting the pins in the materials, does this not get us in trouble with the invasive aspect if taken to court want the most accurate info for our clients, but liability was a concern. So I, I have a comment. Um, if you're doing a home inspection, right, you're, you're inspecting a property um, that's not your client's, it's not yours, and the owner of the property is assuming it's a visual only inspection being performed by you. If you're doing a home inspection, that's what a home inspection is, visual only. So they don't want uh, pins, uh, pinholes in um, painted services especially, right? Um, you may be able to get away with like uh, around the baseboard. I do it in the corners, uh, do it slightly. You can, uh, especially if the surface is rough, but if you have a, a smooth eggshell white wall, um, you probably are, are looking with the infrared first, uh, maybe even touching, your, using all your senses, your smells, your visual, your hand touching using infrared. And then the pinless is a good approach. Um, and then maybe just hide those pinholes. Um, now, you know, as a home inspector, you know, when I was going around and, and, and when I go around and looking for um, rotten wood, you know, I'm always tapping, sometimes doing the prick test. Sometimes my screwdriver will go right through a windowsill on the exterior. That's because it's already rotten. I'm not going to get in trouble with that. But if you're um, investigating and trying to find uh, a moisture intrusion, for example, that hasn't caused damage, structural damage yet, or hasn't swelled the material yet. There isn't an obvious defect yet that's uh, showing you indications of moisture problems, then yeah, you have to be kind of careful with a um, person who is assuming that you're gonna do a visual only inspection. Um, I don't think you're gonna be uh, in front of the judge trying to explain that, um, that uh, you, know, you caused a lot of damage with these little pins um, you're doing your job at the time, um, but so uh, just make sure that your client understands the expectations. You set the client's expectations that this is a visual only inspection. I'm going to use my moisture meter here and there. Maybe I'll, I'll probe with a pin, but um, that's beyond the scope of a visual only inspection. So just be careful. Just don't go around and start um, putting holes in everything, but um, think you, can, you can do your job and, and hide it and nobody will even know. I think a good use of the of the moisture meters too is is could it be either pre existing damage where you have stains on a ceiling and you're not sure if it's existing or non existing. Usually, unless it's a smooth um, ceiling like Ben was saying, you can use either non invasive or the pins because you, you're not you're not slamming the pins into the building material. We're just taking you know just touching the surface. So it's a, it's a good use on on pre existing water spots that you may or may not be picking up with a thermal camera. Yeah. Yeah, and I would just add to that, the pins are designed really just to, to be surface only. They're not designed to be, although they're an inch long, they're not designed to be pushed right. to any depth at all. Yeah, don't be. <laughs> Firm contact at the surface is all you need. But we do see, we do see particularly with, um, you know, like the water damage restoration guys, they push those pins right into depth. <laughs> that there's just no need for it. So. And what we try and, what we try and stress when we do educational seminars like this or in-person things is, the pins on the top of either the MMS2 or, or the survey master, they're not insulated. So what Chris is saying, even if you jam them all the way in or you touch the surface, as soon as it finds moisture, it's going to give you a reading. They're not insulated pins. So there's no real advantage to bury the pins into drywall or into um, building materials like wood, because all you're really doing is, is damaging the internals of the meter. Todd asks, which meter infrared combination tool would you recommend for my first moisture meter infrared combo? Uh, I like, I like them separately. That's just a preference on my thing. So I have got my um, FLIR camera, FLIRC2 and my Survey Master. And um, I like them separate because like, I'll use this a lot more actually than this. They, these are good combos, but then I'll, I'll walk around the entire house with my infrared camera. So having them separate just works for me. What, what do you guys uh, recommend? Or any thoughts um, on that? Well, Tom, Tom can talk about the infrared cameras. I'll tell you that the Survey Master is the number one meter sold in home inspection. It has been for years and years and years. Yep. There's the one that you've got, Ben, and probably a lot of people who are attending this have got them as well. And it's just so easy to use, and you know, it, it, it's it's the standard really for, for home inspection. If you want, if we're not, if we're talking about infrared surface temperature measurement only, that's not visual, not a thermal camera, then the LMS2 has that condensation type. Uh, product that we had in there but in terms of a thermal 
uh, camera, Tom, maybe you can make a recommendation. Sure. I, I would say, um, you know, you don't always want, need to buy the most expensive thermal camera. What you want to look at really is pixel counts. Um, I recommend in the restoration market to have a minimum of 120 by 80 for the, that, what that refers to is the resolution or the clarity of the screen of the image that you're looking at in thermal. Um, if you have a detector size, you know, that's at least 120 by 80, you can start to see where maybe you have missing insulation in wall cavities or around electrical, you can see cold or hot air coming in around electrical outlets and things like that. Um, but it just gives, it's also a great selling tool too. So when you're going into a home inspection, you can do a quick scan. Sometimes, and I, I'm sure this happens more often than not, you have a homeowner kind of walking around with you doing this inspection. It's a great tool to point out, you know, when you have a clear image that you can show, look, I'm, I'm seeing an anomaly here, but then I'm gonna take my survey master and I'm gonna back up what I'm seeing. What I'm just seeing is a temperature difference, you know, with thermal, that's all it is. It's not detecting moisture. It's detecting a difference in temperature on the surface. Cause so that could be cold air or it could be hot water or cold water. So um, that's why what Chris alluded to earlier, thermal's great to start your inspection, but always back it up with, you know, a pin and pinless moisture meter or a combination meter. Uh, Edwin has a, an X-Tech uh, pinless moisture meter um, in IR from Inspector Outlet. Inspector Outlet is our e-commerce partner, inspectoroutlet.com. But he asks, uh, do any moisture meters, uh, do they require periodic maintenance and calibrating? Do all meters and tools require that? I mean, I think a few years ago, I would have said, yes, send it in annually. But that's not really the case these days. I mean, with our meters, uh, you've got a calibration check device, so you can check the pin meter anytime you want. And you certainly, they very rarely go out of uh, calibration, if at all, you know. Uh, and then the non-invasive, uh, it's a relative reading anyway, so it's not really going to be accurate per se because it doesn't really give you an accurate moisture reading anyway, but. You know, you can test that quickly on, you know, very simply comparing a pin reading against your non-invasive reading uh, and do your own test. But for our meters, no, we don't recommend a regular calibration for, for moisture testing unless you have a problem. With hygrometers, we do recommend you replace uh, the probe on an annual basis. The sensor. Yeah, the, pro the sensor probe. There's a replaceable little sensor. Uh, yeah, and I'll show you in the back of this meter. So that's a little replaceable humidity sensor. So these things don't need calibrated. It's not cost effective to calibrate. You just replace them. That's a good question. Thank you. Catherine keeps breaking pins in her meter, sticking them in studs. Do you have replacement uh, pins? Are, are they common or should? We then we don't. Sorry, yeah. We generally don't have people breaking pins, but again, that's usage of them as well. So, you know, don't push them in deep. You know, they're only really meant to go just into the surface. Um, but you get two spare pins with every uh, one of our meters, and we sell them in packs of 20 pins as well. If you're interested, you can email me. I can get you the part numbers and, and pricing. Yep. Let's see. We can probably send you a few free pins as well if you would contact Tom. How about um, frozen building materials? Ruben asks, do pin probe or hammer probe moisture meters work on frozen building materials? Hmm. Uh, well, if they're, it depends <laughs> on the moisture content. Obviously, if it's if it's frozen water, they're gonna right. give you a high reading, yes. Um, so water's conductive in a frozen state or in an unfrozen state. Jay asks, where can I find the moisture content table shown earlier? Yeah, I, I haven't. Where yeah, you? so that that um, you can if you just Google um, the equilibrium relative humidity uh, EMC chart, Google EMC chart, you'll find a million of them. Uh, Kevin asked, does the amount of air in the concrete affect readings? Here we use four to seven percent air for freeze thaw cycle. Mm. So yeah, density of any material will affect a non-invasive moisture meter. So that's one of the reasons that non-invasive moisture meters are not as accurate as pin type measurements. So with concrete per se, you know, there's, you can use a non-invasive moisture meter just to understand what's going on, high spots, low spots, but it's not that accurate in concrete. Um, even meters calibrated for concrete are not that accurate in, in concrete. So there is a, a recommended test it's an ASTM practice called F2170, 
But actually, I mean, it's probably not relevant for home inspection, but certainly for flooring, plug damage restoration to a certain degree, uh, that requires you to drill a hole into the concrete, put in a humidity probe, and wait for the equilibrium relative humidity. But yes, you're exactly right. Density of any material will affect a non-invasive option in return. Uh, William confers, uh, confirms what you've been talking about. Just break the surface with the pins, don't dig in. Um, and Dave asks, um, will the pins work in grout lines between ceramic tiles in a shower? How, do, how deep do they have to be pushed in? I, I wouldn't be doing the pins, right? Uh, you can, you, I mean, you can. Um, I would use the non-invasive to right. see, you know, if you've got high readings. I mean, the, the nice thing about grout is it's very hygroscopic. So if there's moisture there, it'll soak it and bring it to the surface. You could potentially put the pins in the grout lines uh, as well, but not push them in again. Again, touch the surface. Uh, Tyler asks, with a non-invasive moisture meter, is it bad practice to drag the meter against the surface or should you pick it up and reset each time? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. I should have put that in our tips. I mean, I think that... <laughs> The meter that you have there, Ben, we've, we've had them back. They're completely worn through at the bottom yeah. and the sensor poking out and people have asked us to repair them, but, uh, which we can't obviously, but and that's from dragging it. Yeah, they're designed to be picked up and placed. But the reality is like our new Reachmaster that we sure showed show you in the video of, you know, it, it's not always practical to do all of that. And in fact, the Reachmaster we built in a wear plate so you could push it around. And the new survey masters have uh, thicker plastic um, and more durable plastic, so it doesn't wear through either. So although we recommend pick up and place, uh, the reality is everybody drags them around. Now, obviously, that's less, that's more easy to do with our product because it's got a solid plastic back and it's not a wide area. With the rubber pad meters, that's impossible to do. You have to pick them up and, and, and place them. Um, but our meters are designed um, to take the sliding, but you just got to be careful that you're not putting marks on the wall. So we'll take uh, two more questions. Uh, Brad says, my cheap Dr. Meter intelligent moisture meter, <laughs> non-invasive moisture meter, has a density setting on it for the density of the material. Is this a common feature for most meters? And how do you tell the density of the material that you're measuring? Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with that. With that um, uh, with that product at all, so I'll have to look it up. But um, no, it's not a common feature because there's not good accuracy. Uh, even you know, how do you know the density of the material anyway? So it's not a common feature. Um, yeah. Certainly not something we have on our Reachmaster. That new product you saw me show on the extension telescopic handle. We do have a sensitivity setting. And that allows you to zero in on high moisture. So instead of getting a, uh, our scale goes up to a thousand with 999. In fact, instead of getting 999 everywhere you go, you can actually dial back the sensitivity so you can focus in on moisture uh, and reduce the range if you like. But it doesn't really, it's, I mean, I would imagine that other meters doing something similar, but it doesn't really adjust it for sensitivity. Then just not that accurate. You know, if, if, Non-invasive meters were accurate and repeatable. You wouldn't have pin meters, right? You wouldn't need them. Yep. But they're still the most popular selling. So that, that kind of tells you the story a little bit, right? Um, last question. Richard says, the cap over the pins of my survey master is loose and easily falls off. Is there a fix? <laughs> um, well, it depends on, and we've been making the survey master for a long time. I can tell you that we have had a cap issue in the past. We will, if people have cap problems, we'll give you a customer care number, they'll send you one out free of charge. Um, but we did do a cap redesign about three or four years ago. We just don't seem to be having the problems that we did in, in, at that time. But yeah, if you need a new cap, call us, we'll send you one in the mail free of charge. <laughs> we, don't have any, we don't have any of the caps that Ben has for his meter though. That's a little bit out of, <laughs> yeah, no, we don't a little bit discontinued. <laughs> Duct tape. If, it's a, if it's a yellow or gray one, we can supply a cap for a charge, not a problem. <laughs> well, um, somebody asked, um, Catherine, where's this going to be? Where's the video recording of this webinar going to be posted? It's going to be our InterNACHI's webinar system. Um, it's at NACHI, N-A-C-H-I dot org, NACHI.org slash webinar. And there you'll find all of our webinars.
And uh, we have a few coming up. So if you wanted to register for another live webinar, feel free, natchee.org slash webinar. Tom, Chris, I really appreciate taking the time to spend with us and teaching us about moisture meters and doing moisture inspections and infrared and protometer, and especially that new reach tool. I really like that one. I really appreciate it. If anybody has any inquiries about product data sheets, you can go to our website or you can reach out to me directly. I'm happy to uh, answer any questions. If, if you didn't wanna bring it up on this call or something pops up later, I can uh, certainly be a resource for you guys. Chris, last words? Uh, yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for attending. And I uh, really appreciate, uh, you know, we have 130, 140 people on board. So it was great. And yeah. as Tom says, if you have any questions, don't feel, free, you know, feel free to look at, uh, look at our, our number here on the uh, presentation. Give us a call. We're happy to help. Thank you so much. Thank you again. Thank you, Ben. Bye, everybody. Stay safe and healthy. I'll see you later. Thank you. Thanks, fellas. Take care. Bye.